Strada Bianchi, the beautiful Tuscan one-day race, where riders battle it out over a mixture of modern tarmac and traditional gravel tracks that the region is famed for. If you've never seen this race, well, it's exciting, unpredictable and attritional. It requires a great deal of skill in order to negotiate the gravel roads. And it's, well, if you want to watch it for yourself, both the men's and women's editions are going to be available on GCN Plus, on demand, live and ad free. So make sure you check that out. But when the pros ride it, they use road bikes. But it raises a question. Is that the best bike for the job? What about a gravel bike? Would it be better? And crucially, would it be faster on those gravel tracks that the race is often won or lost? Well, in a bid to find out, myself and Manon have got a pair of rather nice uh, brand new Villiers and we're going to ride the entire 184 kilometer route, well, try to, yeah. um, and, and see how we get on. I mean, it's got Italian bikes, Tuscany, sunshine. God, this is gonna be good, isn't it? We're here in the Piazza del Campo in Siena, which is where the race starts and finishes all 184 kilometers of it. It's a cold February morning. We're setting off early because we don't have much daylight. And this is going to be my longest ride ever if I complete it. And I say ever. ever. And I say if because this isn't any old 184 kilometers. This is features a lot of short, punchy climbs and 62 kilometers of gravel tracks spread over 11 sectors. Well, <laughs> Manon's going to be riding uh, a Villa Filante, which is an aero road bike similar to what the pros would use, and some of them do use that exact bike. I'm using a Villa Rave gravel bike. I'm hoping this, for my sake, is the better choice today and, uh, well, gives me sort of an advantage. But anyway, we better get going. We don't have much time. Let's do it, Manon. Oh, Boom. Do it. Right. As mentioned, the 184 kilometer route starts and finishes in Siena. It then heads south into the rolling landscape of Tuscany, taking on 11 gravel sectors, often hitting double digit gradients. The gravel sectors, or sterati as the locals call them, total 63 kilometers, a third of the race. And the longest and most technical is sector eight, the 11.5 kilometer Monte Sante Marie. The first one though is a solid way to get warmed up for the hardships that await. It's 2.1 kilometers long and perfectly straight. We're on the first gravel sector now. And the terrain here at Strada Bianchi has allowed many different types of riders to do well in the race. So you know, climbers, punchers, rulers, time trialists, they've all done well here in the past. And when you combine the, the gravel sectors with the short punchy climbs, it's like sort of having Paris-Roubaix and the Tour of Flanders rolled into one. You need to have a lot of technical skill in order to negotiate the tough gravel sectors and then add the beautiful Tuscan scenery into the mix. <laughs> well, it's a recipe for, for success and it's why I just absolutely love it. Strada Bianchi is actually a lot younger than you might think. The first edition was only back in 2007 and having watched past editions on the TV, it's always been a ride that I've wanted to come and do. It's always like a bucket list ride. And I mean, it's a bit surreal being here, having watched it on the TV and on the white roads. It's great. If you'd like to ride the route that we're doing today, well, you can do. It's uh, the 184 kilometer men's elite route. And there's a link to it in the description below to the GCN commute page. And we've both fitted power meters to our bikes today so that we can compare our relative power outputs on different sections of the course. Because it's really interesting to see how much more work, if more work, say Manon has to do on the gravel compared to me and how much more work I have to do on the tarmac sections compared to Manon. This is the Villa Falante, an Italian superbike and pure performance. It's built to help the world's best athletes win some of the most prestigious bike races out there. With over 100 years of experience poured into this bike, not only 
is it all about aerodynamics, but it's also super lightweight. Coming in at just 7.2 kilograms. And I've got SRAM access groups that are there with hydraulic disc brakes as well. While this bike might not have as much clearance as Ollie's does, I can still fit 13 millimeter tires onto here, which I think is, well, plenty big enough for a ride like today. And for today, I've got 28 millimeters on and they seem to be doing the job. I'm riding the, the Villier Rave, which is a performance focused gravel bike built for racing. It's got much of the same DNA as Manon's Falante, but it's more versatile. So the big difference is it's got clearance for up to 42 millimeter tires. I've gone for 35 millimeter Pirelli Cinturatos today to cope with the gravel. The reason for that is well, I wanted to get close to the UCI limit, although technically the UCI limit is 33 millimeters, but uh, UCI, you've got no jurisdiction here. I'm gonna ride what I want. It comes in a range of builds. Some are more road focused, some are more gravel focused. And the one I've gone for is actually a more road focused build. So it's got Jura Ace DI2 on it. And the reason why I've done that and not gone for an out and out gravel one is because, well, I figured if, you know, someone were to use a gravel bike in Strada Bianchi, they're not gonna want an out and out full gravel bike with the, the one by chain set and the massive wide flared bars. It's just too gravel. So this is kind of the halfway house. It's got nice narrow aero cockpit like a road bike got a road group set with a nice racing double chain set and the biggest difference is I've just swapped the road tyres for Chunky Boys and it's got the same wheels as Manon's actually they're rather nice aero filament wound carbon wheels that are well Villiers own brand they're nice the frame is 950 grams compared to 870 grams for Manon's now that's a difference of 80 grams and well I mean that's that's not much at all I mean we've we've done experiments which show the impact of weight on a climb and that really is marginal oh, this is incredible you have to come here and ride it having ridden a couple of gravel sectors now I think it's important we talk about comfort because it's something that's immediately become obvious this bike has considerably more comfort than Manon's. The bigger tyre volume contributes a lot to that because where you can, it gives more cushion, but also you can run them at lower pressure. And then that has an added bonus of when we go around tight corners on the loose gravel, just so much more grip too. We're on a nice flat section of tarmac now. And, and, and my, my bike feels like a tractor. Mine feels lovely. Yeah, compared to, <laughs> you know, what a normal road bike. And so I think we should do a little experiment to see sort of how much more power I'm having to, to put out. So if oh. you try and hold 200 watts, yep. and I'll see what I do riding next to you. Okay, so I'm around 200 now. Right, I'm 230. 220. What are you at now? 200. 220. 225. 206. 220. 2, 215. Oh, 215. Yeah, still 200. So you're, you're around 20, 25 watts higher. Yes. Well, I mean, a couple of things for that. Your bike is more aerodynamic. You're more aerodynamic than me. You're a bit smaller. But, is that a compliment? Yeah. I thought you were the aero king. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the biggest difference by far is, is going to be the tyres. Yeah. And it's the rolling resistance. I mean, science suggests that, yeah, it's going to be about 20 watts between these specific two models of tyres. So, yeah, it's, uh, 
pretty big. It'll be yeah. interesting to see how it compares when we're back on the gravel. Yeah. Got those chunky boys on. Yeah. We're on the third gravel sector now. I think we should repeat that experiment we just did. So 230 I'm doing. 214, 211, 217. So still a bit lower. Yeah, you're still lower. Well, that's interesting. It's a bit counterintuitive, but I guess it makes sense because I guess it shows that the rolling resistance is still lower on that tire. It's just, you've got less grip. Yeah. And that's where the difference probably is so yeah I think when we start going around some technical corners and uh, trying to corner at speed on this stuff or going up steep loose climbs that's my might, might be where the difference is and is there another point to notice like this bit is quite tame gravel but yeah, some compact. of the other sections have been loose stones everywhere and you've gone around a corner okay and I've just been like slipping Bambi and sliding on, Bambi on ice everywhere slipping and sliding <laughs> <laughs> Seventy k to go now, man on. Longest ride you've ever done. How are you feeling? I felt better. I have to be <laughs> honest, but I'm gonna get to the finish. This Panino is gonna get me. It's gonna get you there. Get me there. there. Um, a few Strada Bianchi facts for you. So, most prolific men's winner is uh, Fabian Cancellara, mm. but he won it before it was a UCI Pro race. Most prolific women's winner is uh, Annemiek van Vleuten. Uh, also, no, my Panino. Um, 10 out of the last 14 editions have been won from a solo winner. Really? Yeah. That's exciting, mm. isn't it? Love a solo breakaway. Wonder if we'll see one today. <laughs> As we mentioned, a third of the race is on gravel, so it's pretty easy to conclude that you're better off with a road bike and road bike tyres, as that's a large proportion of the race and it's going to benefit it better. Hence my choice. But, like Paris-Roubaix, the gravel sectors are often the decisive moments where the race is won and lost. So having a bike that benefits you more than this part of the race, well, I think it weights it heavier. And this is the longest sector of the race, it's called Santa Marie. It's also known as Cancellara, and it's a, a five-star racing sector. It's very technical. And if a gravel bike is gonna make the difference, this is the sector it's gonna do it on. So, well, man on, I'm, I'm gonna attack you. Oh, thanks, Ollie. Thanks, Matt. See you in a bit. Tom Peacock has the fastest time on this sector. 20 minutes, 20 seconds. It's very lumpy and it's got pretty technical gravel and corners. And one of the big advantages we've found on this ride is that I can just corner a lot quicker than Manon on this bike on the gravel. It saves a lot of time, but it also means if you're in a race, you're not spiking your energy by losing position and then having to accelerate and sprint to regain it, but Manon is gonna have the advantage when we get back on the tarmac. So I'm gonna see if I can pull out as much of a gap as possible on the gravel and hold her off. Something else I'm finding is that on the uphill sections, I can get out the saddle and really power up them. This sector is brutal, coming at 130k in. It's sort of like washboard, like corrugated steel, really bumps you around. And the other thing is, is I've got the luxury of being able to pick my line. But if you were in a bunch, that'd be much harder because there's patches of deep gravel you want to avoid, but you may not be able to. This is hard.
So that's the longest bit of gravel sector done and my word, that nearly killed me off. That was so hard, so steep. But now I'm on the nice smooth tarmac and it's time to put this machine to work and try and catch Ollie. I managed to pull out a significant gap, several minutes on Manon on that gravel sector. Could just corner so much quicker on this bike. I didn't really have to brake at all going on the technical descent. There's just a lot more grip with the tires. But now I'm doing my best to try and hold her off on the smooth tarmac, knowing that she's got a significantly faster bike now. I know she's not far behind. Oh, Finally! <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd catch me. It's like, well, I'm knackered. So but also, I. I these, was, that was a lot of chasing. These, these tyres are just so kind of squirmy. It honestly feels like I'm, you know, riding a tank when you're on the smooth road and you're tired. It feels the opposite for me. As soon as I hit that gravel, like you can just tell you just look comfortable and it was off. Yeah. And I'm like really struggling. Even on that really long sector, I was this close to getting off and walking. <laughs> well, I think we've managed to kind of work out that the better bike is the road bike and the road tires overall. And Definitely. that's probably why the pros use it. Yes. You know, we've got phenomenal weather today and I think if it was wet, it would help. It could be a different story. Well, I think it would, but I still think the road bike could have it. Do you reckon? Yeah. This ride is savage. My head's gonna fall off. You got it, you got it. Ah, uh, Ollie, that's 14%. <laughs> oh. I suppose the nice thing about the Rave is that it can be both bikes. You know, yes, it's slightly less aerodynamic than Manon's, only a slight penalty and yes it's only you know sort of 200 grams heavier but you do have that versatility to put you know the skinny road tires in or the big chunky boys and well i mean although the chunky boys are sort of slower overall i think on a course like strada bianchi for a rider like me who's you know not the most experienced off-road they do make the gravel sections a lot more fun. Manon is absolutely spent now. We've got 10K to go, but I mean, fair play to her. Because today, it's the longest ever ride, and she's riding like over 40 kilometers more than the pro women. Fair play, Manon. Ow. <sighs> oh my God. We've only got, we've only got 10K to go. And uh, I think that, that's the last gravel. Is that the last bit of climbing? Oh uh, yeah, well. There's the climb in Sienna, but that's the last gravel. I need Snickers. Not only is this going to be my longest ride, but it's definitely up there with one of the hardest physically and mentally that I've done. It's just that on the gravel section, your whole body just hurts, doesn't it? And these roads, there's no easy bits. It is just relentless up and down, little drags all day long. And it just makes it, that much harder and there were 3,000 meters of climbing as well I think that's yeah. the most climbing I've ever done and just your whole body hurts from your hands your back I mean your legs are just screaming on those steep gravel sections so yeah it's going to be an accom accomplishment when I get 10k to, to go. the finish you're going to smash it I need to finish this Mars bar first though <laughs> oh
We've made it. We're back in the Piazza del Campo where we started. It's finished man on off. She's it has. absolutely battered. Thanks to uh, Villia for the amazing bikes. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, well, I think give, give a thumbs up for Manon for oh. completing her <laughs> longest ever ride. That's I mean, it is impressive. ruined me. But a big thank you to you for dragging me around that, Ollie. I wouldn't, I'd still be out there, like <laughs> halfway around the course if it wasn't for, for you. But yeah, thank you. And I mean, it's such an accomplishment to ride one of the, you know, most prestigious, race, prestigious races. You can't there. even talk now. No, I can't. But I'm... <laughs> if you want to see this done properly, then make sure you check out the men's and women's races on GCM+. Plus. I, I mean, I just can't, can't wait now. You're going to have so much more appreciation for yeah, those riders. It's such a hard course. Yeah. But yeah. Right, let's go get some pizza. Come on. Can you scrape me off the floor? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, <coughs> oh my legs are seizing up. <laughs> oh.